Hello everyone. <laughs> hey, 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 and Mipa. Thank you for the subscription. Of course, time zombie. Good morning, afternoon, evening, and or night. Yep. Hello everyone, whatever your time zone is. Uh, we're here to study some shogi. Continue with our end game book. And so shall we do. Um, totally unprepared one eye, totally unprepared. Where is the book? Where is the book? Here it is. No, not here. The other folder. The end game book. Boop, boop, boop. I'm sticking out of the thing. It kind of looks weird when I'm doing that. Should add a frame to camera or maybe should not over lean to the right. Mm, that's better. All right. You watched the Sunday stream. You told me to play it out in the end game. It was such a long zoom and I resigned against Mabel. Yeah, but you <clears throat> you didn't play out that Suma in the end, right? You were like, yeah, sure, Mabel, I give you the win. I trust you. I trust this is made. While I thought, you know, that handicap game is about checking whenever what they're doing is true or not. Need to add sugar to my tea today. You forget that he may not find yeah too many computer plays me <laughs> and like oh yeah computer goes for this line they probably miss him in mate well also in computer moves what they do is they make a bunch of checks at the end because computers are desperate or they imitate the human desperation anyway it was a good game from maple uh, last sunday it was amazing in fact Uh, where were we? We were... We should zoom screen a little bit, I guess. Oh, yes. The Frozen. Um, we are talking about surrounding the king and limiting the movement. Let it go with Elsa, badly drawn. We had surround the king, limit king movement. Or think about Sumehishi, both are equal ways. To chase means that he may go into ocean, so we better surround, narrow his limit, his movement. Yeah, so this was kind of what we were talking about last week. Thank you for the follow and pin scare. Uh, breaking castle and surrounding the king. If we can do both, it's better to surround the king rather than break the castle because it's the shortest path to the win, which we kind of had here, um, the flow of the approach phase, and which means the end game phase. Um, so we had pivotal piece, breaking the castle, surround the king mate, that's the usual flow. But depending on the battlefield reduction, you can skip the whole thing into mate or like skip certain steps. Um, that's what we talked about last week. And of course, what it's quite difficult um, concept we talked about at the very end is that in end game we say speed is more important than material, but in order to gain speed, you need peace sacrifices. So in order to be faster, you need to have material advantage somewhat to begin with. So you wanna end the middle game with some, let's say, peace advantage, and therefore that peace advantage by peace sacrifice is gonna give you the speed, yeah, or the ability to surround the king or stuff like that. Um, all of these weapons that we talked about will be applicable because we have this material advantage early on. So yeah, material advantage is important, yeah, because we don't wanna run out of attacking pieces yeah so we got talked about is it phoenix or dragon i forgot what it was um breaking the castle 
putting the castle on fire, yeah, targeting the guard in free trade, raking, surrounding the king, knowing many tactics is power, so we had uh, hmm? detach the gold, seal of the escape route, so this was more the surround part, this was more break the castle, this was more surround. And therefore, because we know many tactics, not only... Uh, yeah, also knowing many tactics will give us speed and there are the shortcuts we can do. So like if we want to break the castle, detaching the gold will speed up the process because we're going to distract one of the defenders. If we want to surround the king, maybe we can drag him out of the castle, um, exposing him and it's going to shorten the whole process because the castle is becomes useless. Um, I completely forgot what is EK. Oh, it's also expose the king. Yeah, if you expose the king, means perhaps the king is outside the castle and you can mate him immediately. Yeah, checkmate him. Um, you can surround the king, but you can speed up the mating process by sitting off their escaping route. Yeah. So those are the shortcuts that we learned using those tactics. And yeah, two birds with one stone is always the best thing. If you're able to do two things at once, like surround the king while dragging him out. That's like the best tactic you can play. Combining those tactics makes them more powerful. It's like, like what? Let's think of some card game. You combine two cards, boom, and it promotes to upgrades to a Charizard or something. Yeah, you have a stronger Pokemon. That's what you want. Uh, yeah, and if you omit the face itself, it's the strongest play as well, because you're closer to mate, basically. All right, so that was the end of that. And next chapter was the life extension. So we're gonna talk rather of how to get to the king. We're gonna talk about how to not let them get to the king. So more like defensive side. When Mifa taught others will easily find a long sophisticated sumer like himself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's actually Resignation with style, we say, like, yeah, I know it's Sume. I'm gonna resign here because it makes a beautiful position. And that's that's kind of the point here. I was just curious if he if he saw it or he just um, lost the fighting spirit. Um, okay, let's ignore the messages. I'm getting distracted. We can convince people to pay sh play, play the shoggy by saying we can teach them the secrets of life extension. Take notes. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can say, oh, it's a Japanese secret of yeah, life extension and stuff. And yep. I have those notes from yesterday all over the place. Uh, we're gonna ignore them. All right, there's a lot of kanji I don't understand, honestly, so we will have to figure out the translation. Uh, is there any way I can make it? I should probably zoom in so that you guys can see better. So types of defense, it says. Types of defense. I'm always confused. Defense is written by an S, not by C, right? That's something I've been confused for a while. The um, dictionary is always corrected to defense with a S. I don't know why C comes up in my mind sometimes. And Teki Hei means soldier, enemy soldier. Coping with enemy, so um, copium, <laughs> um, Taisho. Yeah, so so basically the title is like dealing with well enemy attack. Let's call it. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's our chapter. And this way we have types of defenses. So this will be our de like our shields, let's call it. We could call it like defensive weapons, but let's call it shield instead, because it's gonna be about king, it's going to be about extending his defense. So let's talk about shields, armors, um, castles, betrayal strategies of throwing away your soldiers behind and running away for, for your own life. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be this type of... Trying to select this kanji. It's not allowing me to select the kanji on the right for some reason. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, the last kanji is the system, so it's not getting translated. And the kanji next to it is the de deceleration. That's gonna be so hard for me to say. Deceleration. So we're gonna have deceleration system, and we will have. Eradiction, extermination. Okay, which one sounds better? Um, <clears throat> well, getting rid of sounds better, but I mean, extermination or eradiction puts more into imagination, so we might as well put those. Um, yeah, let's go with extermination. <laughs> So those are our options, yeah? So types of defense, we have two options. So we will have the declaration system and the extermination. So um, then by looking this direction, you're going to have different categories of how they work. So for example, this one is the difficulty level. like how hard it is to pull it off. So this says low, this says high. So the extermination level is more risky, it's more difficult to pull off. Deceleration. Okay, deceleration. Gotcha. Cellar. It has the word cellar inside of it. Deceleration and extermination. Gotcha. Um, then this will be more like type or like meaning. Okay, goal. Okay, that's it. so what's our goal, objective of this strategy? And this is also goal. So, hey, um, well done, translation. Um, <clears throat> purpose. How do we gonna? Okay. We scratch that. This is not goal. This is gonna be our goal. This is what we wanna do. Okay, I'm gonna do it like this. We're gonna do how and why. Or like goal. That's how we're gonna do it. Because <clears throat> what the deceleration system says is slow down the attack, yeah? Of the enemy, yeah? The enemy attack. And here we have seal off the attack. So in this case, we slow them down. In this case, we, um, well, eliminate, let's say. So this is more drastic, you all can feel, yeah? This is just, uh, we're going to slow them down and we're going to win the game in the meantime. This is like, oh, you were thinking about attacking? No, it, it, it's not, not happening. It's not happening, yeah? So this is more like extermination and this is the, the deceleration, yeah? <laughs> 
All right, so why do we do that? Um, so this is the live extension of our own king. So this is own king life extend. So extend your own king's life. And this kanji probably means to defend all, I assume. Scrub value. Uh, smash the defense. Uketsubushi. Yeah, basically to destroy, like, defend everything, yeah. Um, crush them. How do we translate that it's better? Oh, speaking of which, I'm pretty sure this kind of terminology should be in Hidechi dictionary. Let's see. defense. Kiru. Act of stubbornly defending against the opponent's attack until it runs out and is crushed. So that's basically the definition. Um, so I would defend them, I guess, like crush them in defense. It's literally what it says, but like uh, defend everything, I guess. That's like the easiest way to like explain it. So defend everything, they run out of attack, and therefore we win. It's actually a very rare way to win the game. Um, I wonder if they're gonna mention, but in order to win the game, you have to eliminate the enemy king, right? So even if your own king is safe, it doesn't mean you won the game. So although it is like one of the goals we can have, it's not gonna immediately allow us to win. So this is why it's risky. That's what I know. This is low because we extend the life. We do not expect to live forever. We just expect to be faster. Thank you, Kurosaki. Okay, so in this case, we're going to talk about defense. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, about the defensive target, um, the target is basically to extend the king's life. Yeah, the target of the the target of the the goal of the end game in terms of the defense, basically we want to extend our king's life. Yeah, so life extension. Yeah. So we have, uh, when we talk about the defense, we speak about slowing down, slowing down the enemy and shut down the enemy completely, shutting down. So those are going to be our deceleration and extermination, yeah? Um, so we're gonna talk mostly about slowing down Because there's gonna be a reason. Okay, uh, yeah, we're gonna focus on the second one because this, this, this. So, because our target is to, well, 
capture the enemy king. Sometimes we won't be able to use the extermination technique. Like it won't be possible to use it basically. So most likely we're gonna use the second, the slow down one. So often impossible. Because as we said, uh, there will be times where your opponent has four attacking pieces. And as we know, having four attacking pieces versus the castle, it's like undefendable, right? Which means our only option will be to slow them down. So we want to focus on focusing on on slowing down, yeah? So yeah, um, of course in Shogi, you would like to be the only one attacking and you just would like to win by attacking. But it, it's unlikely that it's going to happen. In Shogi game, you, you have to take both sides, yeah, attack, defend. And this is where we need the life extension technique uh, to learn to have our attack at least one move faster, yeah? So, only attack Shogi on likely need to have the shield, yeah? Yeah, we need to have a shield, we need to have those um, techniques. Those defensive techniques, the life extension, yeah. We need to have them. So it's our shield or our um, um, armor. We're gonna use those to become faster, yeah. So, because better defense means longer life, longer life, which means faster attack for us. Yeah, so <clears throat> if we are able to extend our king's life by one move, means we have one move more to invest in the attack, therefore we have higher chance to win. Hi Hegemon, how are you? Okay, so first we're gonna talk about, um, before we're gonna talk about the life extension technique, we're gonna talk about what type of conditions I need to be that we fail our defense. So we're gonna talk about the undefendable situation. So when do, when in fact, when do we lose, yeah? When do we say that we lost the game? When do we say we lost? Like, obviously it's like, oh, that's when your king is checkmated, but um, there is this particular time on the Shogi board in the game where you just cannot defend anymore. And this is what we're talking about here. In the diagram one, uh, okay, we don't have peace advantage. So let's see, we have rook, we have bishop, we have one, two, four generals, we have knight, knight. So we have all of our pieces. So in this case, um, equal material, yeah? So that's the one, equal material. Then, if you look 
if you look closely, the enemy has pivotal pieces. So it's not our pivotal pieces, call it enemy pivotal pieces, yeah? And what's happening? Um, we are not approaching them. It's one-sided, yeah? One-sided. So that's the situation that we say that rarely occurs, but this is the situation. Um, the enemy is attacking, they have pivotal pieces, they have enough pieces to attack. And we have no counter. Yeah, no counter. No way to reach that king, yeah, if you look closely. In my first game of Shogi, I lost by putting two pawns in a column. Yes, that's called Nifu, uh, double pawn. And in, in order to... <laughs> we have also this emoticon showing Nifu. It is uh, kind of rule. It is a rule that you need to get used to in the beginning. Also, remember that you cannot win by pawn drop checkmate. Uh, it's a rule that beginner for tend to forget about because they are like, oh, I'm gonna learn how the pieces move. Oh, the nif rule. All oh, the promotions. Remember, you cannot win the game by pawn drop. Pawn push. Okay, pawn drop. It's it. It seems like it's a mate, but it's actually illegal. So it's the most painful mistake you can make as a beginner after Nifu. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So you have to learn, like, you have to learn to look at the pawns. And now you can see this column is open. It has no pawns, means you can drop the pawn here. Everywhere else is illegal because there is a pawn here, 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 here. And at the same time, you have to learn... Where can my opponent drop? Well, he has pawn here, 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 which means he also can drop pawns on this line. So then you learn, oh, so I'm going to sacrifice my pawn, they're going to retake, then I'm going to drop. You learn those techniques um, to enable pawn drop without Nifu, yeah? That's part of Shogi, part of the Shogi middle game. Okay, in this case, they say even if the gold escapes, this guy comes closer, and there is no escape. So um, what they're saying is if you're late with the creating of pivotal piece, you're going to be late with the attack. So that's important point. Um, mm, Late, <laughs> late with PP, it means you're going to pee yourself. Um, late with creating PP, pivotal pieces, goes into late in endgame, yeah? So that translates itself uh, indirectly. Out on a joke. So this situation is auto. How do you write out? Yeah, like if you if you if you talk about baseball, strike, 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 and then out. So that's the situation. We are out. We got strike too many times. A uh, king. Yeah. This is the king, and this is the king. Yeah. This kanji can be drawn without the dot, like over here, it has this dot here. You can write it without the dot. Um, it's, the same, it's the same piece. It's just traditional that one has the dot and the other doesn't. It's the same piece. 
but I'm writing about it in my new book, so if you're interested, you will be able to buy it somewhere in the future. I'm gonna open a window. Good, summer is coming. All right. All right, diagram two, new diagram, let's see. So we this time have, both of us have the pivotal piece. Yeah, both have the PP, pivotal pieces. Uh, no So the difference is in king safety. Difference. Um, I just realized I put the difficulty as div two. Difficult, just to make it clearer, perhaps difficulty, not a difference. So yeah, we can see it. Boom, anaguma. Um, no anaguma. So. Clearly, Sente cannot win. Yeah, Sente cannot win. In this way, um, after you make the pieces, the pivotal piece, what matters is the king safety. Yeah, if the king safety is off, it's going to be really bad. So, Mm. Okay, two important things. Uh, let's read this. So we cannot mutual attack because our king is too weak. So that's the point, yeah? We cannot go strongly because it's too weak. So the mutual attack is impossible. And therefore, what they call it is the Hitori Shuban. So Hitori means one person, like alone. So it's like one-sided endgame, yeah? So it's, again... Um, same out so let's let's put it like this and then one sided end game so this is what we want to avoid we want to avoid like if we can do it like if we are on the attacking side that's winning that's what we want to do but this is what we want to avoid as a defensive side because then we'll be out I think they're gonna summarize it later, so I'm gonna just leave it. But what we learned um, is if they have pivotal pieces and we don't, it's bad. And after that, if we both have pivotal pieces, they have better defenses, it's also out, yeah. Despair, yes, exactly. Waiting for your handicap book so I can learn how to play against Silver Tandem. Mifa, you should be one writing handicap book. We already talked about this. Okay, to avoid um, one sided. Okay, how? One sided endgame. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, so apparently that's a demon in, 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 in Japanese, but also it, it sounds like, like, like push type of deal. Um, and also, also sounds like something a karate people were like, oh, 
day, so we are really doomed. So, uh, yeah, we're doomed also. Let's go one sided end game. Here we go. So, that's the Hitori Shuban, yeah. In order to avoid it, yeah, we want to avoid it. Avoid, avoid, osu, osu. Um, we have to clear off, I guess, the enemy pivotal pieces. Remove, yeah, remove, clear out. So, remove enemy pivotal pieces. Um, okay, there are three types of removal. That sounds slowly wrong. Okay, and then we uh, pivotal piece removal. Yeah, uh, slowly gets. Uh, so we gotta add E in front of it. Uh, in the diagram three, you have the pivotal piece over here. And we cannot ignore it, right? It's right next to our king. Next, they're targeting to promote the knight. So we have to deal with it. How do we deal with the situation, guys? What would be your way of dealing with it? So this is the Ikken Ryu, yeah? One, gap, dragon. Very dangerous. Yeah, a very scary Tesuji shape. How do we deal with it? Yep, yep. <laughs> it's it's getting worse. Every every lesson is getting worse. Um, so clearly we have a bishop. We gonna drop it to six six. They will have to escape here. But as you see, the enemy target will disappear. The target which was the night promotion, it's is getting cleared off. And the pivotal piece it's being deleted. So preventing Enemy target, which specifically is Knight 7 7 promotion, and rem <laughs> removed. Removed, yeah. Konoyani, uh... so yeah, forcing enemy piece out, yeah. That's the point here, and that uh, means we not allow the one-sided, yeah, not allow the one-sided endgame. So we escape that possibility here. Yeah, so here... Um, they say that we cleared off the knight promotion, uh, the end, our camp cannot be clear, easily destroyed. And if the enemy piece, the pivotal piece is only one, 
<laughs> You're saying there's more than one? Okay, um, then we have a lot of fun um, defending, yeah? So if we have one target, it's easy to defend against one target, yeah? Easy to defend. Question mark. Let's 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 like start asking ourselves how easy it is if there is only one pivotal piece. Okay, so this this is the forcing. So this is the um, removal APPR. So it's the APPR number one forcing the piece out. We're getting crazy with those abbreviations today. Um, so depending on the situation, you cannot, like whatever you do, you cannot chase them away. In this type of situation, you want to throw them off of your core as far as possible. At least, no, as far as possible. At least a little bit. So it's going to be, um, if you cannot get rid of them, push them away from the core, the core, the core, the castle, yeah? At least a little bit, yeah? So what do we have? We have like pushing away. Actually, it makes sense because it's the word also. We just push and it all makes sense now. My life is complete now. <laughs> uh, how did we come up with this coincidence? All right. Um, yeah. So it's about pushing, yeah, pushing them away. So in diagram five, um, if they have a knight, yeah, if they drop the knight here, Yagura is gonna break. That's the decision, yeah. We take, they take, we have a silver at the hand, it's broken. So we cannot stop this attack, yeah? We cannot exterminate it. There's shutdown, yeah? But shutdown is impossible. We wanna chase away the enemy pivotal piece. How would you, guys, how would you chase away the pivotal piece here? What about playing against weaker players so they blunder their pieces instead? Oh, that's boring. Grow up, Hegemon. Play with people at your strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the answer is we want to pull the gold general down. Okay, let's just select that this is the piece. <coughs> okay. So basically, what I want you to notice first is that if we drop the knight, the knight is severe because it attacks this gold together with this piece. 
So that's one tactical thing. Now, strategical thing, what we talked about is that the attacker wants to be close, yeah? As we remember the attacking attacker goal is to be close, yeah? To the king. So if we manage to waste their time, push them away, that's considered defense because they're further away from the goal. And tactically speaking, um, they will move here. And the knight drop that was attacking this gold together with him, it's going to be lonely. So it's not going to be this much of a deal. We will be able to, for example, escape with the gold. Yeah, it's going to be less effective thanks to that. So we're pushing them away again, yeah? And I want you to notice that it's, again, in direct connection to what we talked before. As an attacker, you want to get close, so you deny them this objective. That's important here. Yeah. So we cleared off... Um, Yeah, so this is also clearing off. It's gonna yeah, force the piece out. Uh, clear or push away. So force away, uh, clear it. Yeah, that's that's this first technique that we have to remove the enemy. Pivotal piece. This way it slows them down, yeah? Now the second way, we're gonna have the exchange. Our favorite word, kakukokan. Bishop exchange, yeah? In this case, we have the more basic meaning of the exchange as in um, I had some PTSD of using the wrong word for in Japanese. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> basically, you want to exchange the attacker. Um, here we have the silver attacking the gold. Uh, in order to escape that, perhaps you would like to move the gold, but then the rook check comes in. Uh, we dropped our gold, but they have the knight to follow up. So we cannot... Um, defended by escaping our piece, yeah? So this is the worst case. Um, worst case. Where we have them setting up the pivotal piece installing okay um enemy creates pivotal piece with tempo so here we have uh, they just drop the silver we run they drop we drop they drop and like, this was this force. Every, every possible move that we played is a defensive move. Um, which means we didn't gain on the attack, which means we are just dancing to the rhythm of their moves. Yeah, that's the worst case scenario. It's, it's again, one-sided, yeah, one-sided endgame. And they're going target the gold strategy. It's the basic strategy. So this time we're going to learn how to counter that, target the gold strategy. We prefer to drop a piece. This is the smart way, the wise way to do it. Um, they're going to take the gold, we're going to retake. It looks natural. 
but as a result result well no pivotal piece for the enemy yeah because they're gonna clear it off so for example take take rook drop uh, rook drop itself isn't threatening much so we have little bit of margin of life, yeah? We gained one move. Guys, if you have any question, that's like the most important part perhaps here. If you hopefully you understand, like how, how do we gain this move, yeah? Hopefully you understand the difference between those two. Here it's like, Let's imagine this is like a check run, check drop, checking something. We're gonna take the silver, take, 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 and we put the pressure, put the pressure, put the pressure, yeah? Here it's like, take, take, rook drop, the pressure is here, but it's not the check level of the pressure. It's just like, oh, I'm gonna destroy you on the next move. Which is farther there, oh, I'm gonna destroy you now, yeah? It's going to be one more difference here. You could argue the look is alone. So one, remember one of the uh, conditions to break the castle is infiltration, right? But once we do the exchange, uh, exchange prevents infiltration. Castle infiltration. It, it's perhaps a little bit ex better example. It make, might make sense later on. Um, little bit better example perhaps yeah we're gonna leave it here um it's basically our second way um to remove the yeah okay so let's concentrate on the removal so we have the Removal of the enemy piece um, that will be exchanged. Yeah, so we had forced it away, and now we have to exchange it. So that's gonna be our second method. Let's leave it here. In diagram, uh, here we have this pawn that's really threatening our king with the rook together. Uh, they're threatening silver drop, right? Um, we have no pieces in hand. What can we do here to protect it? Exchange, yeah? Exchange again. Exchange to defend. That's 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 that sounds amazing. Um we're gonna take it. They're gonna take and then we drop the pawn. This is how we buy some safety. It's literally buying because we're paying the silver yeah by sucking silver i'm saying buying because they say like gold gold actually the kanji for gold means money in japanese and silver and gold kind of makes you think of money so we're buying the safety by sacrificing it by giving the money to the opponent Yeah, so it's important that in case of the exchange, exchange means enemy uh, same amount of pieces, yeah? So we are not defending forever, we're just delaying them.
So it's just simply slowing down, yeah? But not stopping them. Yeah, so for example, here we had this dragon example. For example, here example. Um, it's not like we ta if we've taken this dragon off the board, we simply pushed it away, we delayed it, yeah? It's become less severe on our king. Um, the same way your guys pushing the job that you had to do tomorrow, today, into tomorrow, the job is not going to disappear. It's, you still have to do it eventually, yeah? You still have to deal with it eventually. Uh, you're just delaying the consequences. It's the same idea here. With the exchange, the same but less direct. We are not taking away their pieces. We're simply delaying the consequences of their pressure. Yeah? Be like... The boss comes to you in the morning, he's like, where is your rapport? And you're like, do you want a coffee? And he's like, oh, thank you. But in one hour, he's going to remember that, that you were supposed to give him rapport. He's going to come back. You cannot distract him with coffees forever. So that, that's this type of slowdown we're talking about here. Yeah. Okay. And we have the third version of the removal, which is going to be this very impossible to understand kanji um shadan isolation sounds like shutdown kind of uh, quarantine circuit breaker cut off yeah cutting off cut well removal and cutting off isolation isolation So instead of pushing them away, it's like, I'm not going to let you reach me under any circumstance, yeah? So this time, actually, this time we're not clearly removing it. So not really removal. Yeah, we're just... Isolate. I mean, you could argue that forcing them away isn't really removing anyway, but that's that's what it says here. Um, so what we're removing actually is the power, yeah? Removing power, kind of. <clears throat> the influence becomes weaker. So indirectly we're removing, yeah? Indirectly we're removing by limiting what they can do. So this is why he keeps it in the same category. In diagram 11 you have uh, the dragon here, a double attack on the Mino, quite troublesome. If we were to defend this gold, they have the knight to continue attacking. Uh, in this type of variation, the problem is, you know, that they both Targeting the gold, yeah, it's very painful. Again, if we go down, we're just gonna exchange two pieces for one. Um, if we're gonna use the king to defend, they're just gonna take this for free. So all the options here, we don't have any other option. So we have to use this uh, blockade, yeah, isolation slash blockade, let's call it. Technique, which is gonna be our favorite Encore Pawn, yeah? Encore Pawn. Or Bottom Pawn, yeah. I guess, yeah, both translations are possible. <clears throat> so we block... Blocking sideways, yeah, blocking the rooks. Blocking rooks. Both of them at the same time. 
And the power of our castle. Yeah. Just skyrocketed right now. Yeah. You can also see that they don't target the gold anymore. And especially this rook, it completely out of play, yeah. You can argue that oh this dragon still attacks the gold, but this rook is completely out of play. Yeah. So what what we have here? We have uh Piece that has no influence feels like it doesn't exist, yeah. That's important here. Instead of pushing it away, we made it useless, yeah. So this rook is useless. Our favorite word. This rook is useless. Um, we made it so by using the blockade, yeah. So we remove the pressure by making it useless. It's indirect way of dealing with the pivot tapis. In diagram 13, we have the silver crown Anaguma, a very strong castle, but there is a silver on 7 9. That's stabbing our castle from the side. Um, so if we were thinking about the exchange, yeah, we're gonna take um, and the attacker is removal, but the problem is we are allowing take take, which means this dragon comes closer to our castle. This is very bad situation. At that point, both together with the bishop, they will be able to pressure the second gold, yeah? So in this case, for example, takes, takes, um, silver drop. We can just take it because it's hishi. They cannot retake it with any piece. Instead, if we drop the silver here, perhaps, trying to defend, we also can drop a gold here. Um, we will take it with this gold, but then the bishop can take. And they drop the gold, take the silver, drop to take it, and drop the gold here. Okay, so basically, um, we're gonna. Basically, it's gonna be a silver here. A gold here, dragon here, and they're gonna drop the gold here. And this position itself is a hishi. Yeah. It's a hishi because we can take the knight and redrop it here. So it's it's a little bit confusing, but it's gonna lead to a mate. Like it's gonna lead to a mate. Basically, yeah. Hishi. So hishi. This situation will lead to hishi, yeah. So instead, we're gonna drop the lens here. Um, this is again the blockade technique. We managed to extend our screen alive. Yeah, we succeeded ex ex extending the life. And it clears up the two problems that we had. Uh, it doesn't specify which problems we had. Um, Okay, uh, here if they take king takes, it's fine. There are many things that they're saying here. I'm trying to think what's the best way to convey that. Um, so 
So if we try to attempt uh, to use the blockade technique in order to uh, remove the pivot RP's uh, influence, the main point we want to do is to defend our gold in this case. So removing influence on the god. Yeah, that's important here. Blocking it, yeah? Blocking bishop, in specifically speaking. Thanks to that, our castle is able to survive. The other important things they're saying that we're using a weak piece to create a wall. A cheap piece, you know, we're calling them cheap pieces. A wall or the blockade, yeah. And because we cut off the enemy piece influence, um, they won't be able to attack as efficiently, yeah? I give up on this word. <laughs> yeah. Using... Okay. So yeah, pivot our piece. We block its influence, yeah? Similarly here, pivot our piece, we block its influence. Yeah, here was the exchange. So this is the different technique we have. We block those invisible lines. We deny them those lines. This is what the blocking the influence means. So far so good, guys. Uh, hello, Goody. Um, I've only played two games of Shaggy in my life, so I'll blunder all my pieces to you. Uh, don't. <laughs> Just don't. If you have only played two games in Shogi in your life, then it's hard to find a weaker player unless you ask the friends or family who doesn't even know the rules in the first place. Well, you can also argue that people who have experience with chess will have better background to start playing Shogi. So you can have advantage already by playing chess, yeah? Unspoken advantage. This is why when you say like, when you see like this young player who boom, who becomes one done immediately, you're like, hey, do you have any experience with Shang-Chi or uh, chess before? And often, often would they say, yes, they do. Uh, Shaggy Wars is more like a meme. Like if you want to relax and play a lot, um, it's good. I mean, for beginners, I don't recommend because the time setting is quite rapid and then you just panic. And what you want to do as a beginner, you want to learn how the pieces move. So you want to spend your time staring at those kanji and remembering drawing those invisible lines in your mind. Oh, the gold moves to the left. Here, if they promote, means I can take it, you know? You want to spend time on creating those mental neur neuronal roots. Um, if you play fast games, it's just like... Same way I'm trying to play guitar. I if I'm going to play guitar, if I do it slowly, I learn, oh, the string is here, and then I'm able to play this melody faster. But if I start by playing very first melody, I'm going to tire my hand, I'm going to give up because I'm not able to play it and um, never try to play guitar ever again, yeah? So by that logic, it's better to take your time. You never got a checkmate in Shogi yet. Well, that, that, that's an achievement, I guess, yeah? Um, I hope you know how the Biorami works, right? The Biorami... Um, 
I hope that's not why you run out of time. If you play it on 81 Dodger, you have a certain amount of time per move after you use your main time, yeah? That's Biaomi, seconds per move you have after the main time. Yeah, just make sure you set up your game with high time to think, yeah. Or play correspondence game, that's another way. Um, yeah, I would recommend like 15 minutes, like the tournament we do is 15 minutes, 30 seconds beyond me. For beginners, 60 seconds beyond me is also fine. Oh, that makes sense during a lot of games. I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, you wanna... The way you learn the game is by thinking what to do and figuring it out. If you just play a game and they're like, ah, oh, I lost it, I'm, I'm weak, I'm not going to try again. That's not a learning process. You want to spend your time, you know, play, think, and they, oh, I should have done this and this because this happened, yeah? So this is why playing with your friends might be fun, because they like you enough to spend time with you, and they like you enough to explain stuff to you. If you play against strangers, they immediately leave the game, um, uh, and you're left alone. This is why I always recommend, like on our Discord, you can ping people on our Discord and like study together. Maybe you can make friends and like make rivals, whatever. You can join our tournaments. People are motivated to learn, and that makes a difference. Yeah, playing to learn versus playing to waste your to you like like a hobby, yeah? like just because you want to spend time on it. Um, that's a huge difference here. Of course, you don't have to play Shoggy all the time, like seriously, like you just want to spend your time and relax sometimes, that's fine. But if you do want to improve, you need to put the work, yeah? It's not going to happen because you played many games. This is this is not a guitar. This is not a muscle memory. This is something you have to work on consciously. And the smart way to do it is take your time. Because else it's going to be irritating and you're going to give up. I tell it from my experience, yeah. And then the second part would be enjoying the process of learning, which is also very, very difficult. And sometimes we don't enjoy it. Sometimes we have to go through pain. Sometimes we have to take a break. It's why it's difficult and it's why not everyone can succeed at it, yeah. But be smart about it, yeah. The smarter you are about it, the more percent chance you have to succeed at it do not throw yourself at the games okay uh this is why we're reading this book to become smarter without playing actually so it's another way to do it menjo um so when you menjo in general means a certificate Diploma, this one. And the way it works... Menkyo. No, Menjo, right? Menkyo. Menjo. I'm confused, right? Menkyo. Um, this is how it looks. It's basically a license, diploma. And... It might silly, might look silly, but from our Western point of view, but it's a very traditional thing. You have traditional Japanese paper and you have those words that are decided and the rank, depending on the rank, there are different words. And you have like those, you have, for example, chairman, Meijin and Ryo signed. So like those title holders actually spend their time and hand write your certificate. So this is why the payment for it is expensive, depending, you know, the higher the rank, the more signs you have and the more expensive it becomes. The Q level is very, like, much cheaper, but it's also like, you see, there's, there's just one sign and it's probably not even handwritten, probably handwritten, but like, there is less signs on it, so it's less valuable. So what people do is usually they go as high as they can and then they buy the menjo. So... Um, in traditional sense, in the past, like very like hundreds of years ago, 
people would be sending those teachers and then they would give a certificate that they prove that you have a certain strength in shogi. And this is how they would earn money and this tradition kind of state. And this is why it costs this much because basically they earn money on those. Yeah, they earn money on giving your certificate. So that's it. That's why it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's signed by the uh, title holders. So if in that year that you buy it, he's the title holder, he's going to sign it. And this is why sometimes people order different menu to have a different signs, but it's like hardcore way to do it. Um, but yeah. Um, I also have a menu for one dan Lady Pro. I got one. Um, I don't have this case like here yet to show off. Actually, I wanted to order the case. I should order it. Um, basically, it's like for big achievements. For pro, when you get promoted, you also get one. Yeah, uh, in Lady Pro, it's from one down up. You don't get it for Qs. For male, it's like I think they also get it, but yeah. Anyway, digression. <laughs> How big is this chapter? Mm, yeah, there are many examples, but we're almost on. Yeah, so it would end here, right? Normally we would end lesson here. We still have some time. But honestly, it's hot today and my my patience is running out, especially that there are children shouting outside. So we might end up early today. Unless you guys, you guys are motivated to do it, and we're gonna do it. We're gonna push through pain. Um, tell me if you'd like to, because the less we do this week means the less we do next week. Yeah, unfortunately. Lure invitation, interesting. Um, yeah, it is cool, yeah. In a way, it, for some people it is motivating, yeah. Um, depends what you like, basically, yeah. So even though you're abroad, you can order those. This is why Shuggy Wars or like 81 Dojo is cool. 81 Dojo especially, yeah, it's easier to level up than Shuggy Wars. Um, you can order it, basically, on 81 Dojo. So we talked about removal, yeah? Removal. But this is the case where we cannot do it. We cannot do it, so we're gonna talk about a technique called a lure. Let's translate it as a lure. Because it's shorter word than attraction and invitation. We're gonna go fishing. I know you guys come here for those, so let's do it. Um, it's quite weird. Okay, let me think of it. Relaxed, sitting, holding the rod, sitting on a chair.
and fishing. And he has a hat. Ta da! No, I didn't like the hat. <laughs> Adobe is just saying, nope, you're not gonna get the shape you want. And, and he has a lure on his hat. Boom, fishing rod. And there's a penguin here. Watching what he's doing. So. <laughs> um, lure. Okay, how do you remember the removal? Because we had edge lord. Let's see. Let's let, let's think of it. Uh, I guess I always drew it at the at the very end, but we had push off wall. Ose, I I I cannot stop thinking about the karate guy because we had this Ose thing and everything. So I guess it's like a judoka rather. The so removal was like a karate guy. Judoka. Judoka sounds better because it's pushing off instead of punching, right? Um, how does kimono work again? Black belt, waving, long pants. Yeah, it's karateka. Karateka, judoka, I don't know. Boom, boom. They all will have meme faces one day. Yeah, boom. Uh, he does not have hair. Some hair. Uh, hair, hair, hair. Afro. Afro Judoka. Here we go. <clears throat> um, he's very aggressive. He has Afro. It's like the it's the most aggressive Judoka you can find in your life. He's called Ose. Ose is his name. Um, because instead of Os, Os, when they say in karate, they say Ose. And here you have the fishing guy. Somehow they're friends. Um, we're gonna learn soon why they're friends. So this guy look, likes to uh, push away. He likes to... throw you out, and he likes to create a blockade on your knee. Yeah. So it's also, actually, I, I, I don't want him to have the band. He will just have the, the katsu band on his face. He will have the, the katsu. Here you go, the katsu band. Um, so he will have those three techniques, yeah, the, the removal, so like the force out, uh, push away, and no, exchange, exchange, wait, how do we explain exchange with a judoka? So he has the push, he has the block techniques, yeah, because the judoka, judoka will say, yeah, judoka. Um, But what's the, the third one? The exchange. What what could be exchange? Did he exchange the bows in the beginning? Yeah, he exchanged the politeness because he's a very polite judoka and he's like Yeah. So here you have it. And then we have the lure guy and there's a penguin staring at him. He's gonna steal the fish the second he fishes it. Which done? He's a black belt, of course. I mean, of course, right? Um, is a black belt. Wait, that's not how a belt looks like. Um, was it like this? Is a black belt clearly?
so judoka also always avoids landing up in ose yeah one-sided end game use those three techniques which is push I'm, I, I need different color because it's not visible you have push it's even less visible now yep it's less visible we're gonna redraw it somewhere else um yep but here he is yeah push exchanges blocks the uh he has the top belt of the epp federation eppr federation black belt yeah I cannot comprehend how my brain works sometimes, but hey, that's that's for John to figure out. <laughs> John being my fiance, of course. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Um, so lure. We cannot use our judoka, so we have to use a different technique called luring technique, luring the piece out. That is, all the pieces are fishes. Yes, you stay here for one hour and a half for my brain to break and finally throw away some jokes. Yes, I know you do. Uh, you get it. Okay, so the problem is they're gonna promote it. And we're gonna lose a gold. So it seems like we're gonna lose a gold uh, with the pawn promotion. Um, we have no way of like protecting it. No defense. Yeah, like if we if we think about directly about how to protect pound promotion, there is no way. There is no way to protect it. Yeah, that's that's again promotion and silver, but upside down. Yeah. It's upside down. This enemy promoted silver. In this case, we're gonna use a bait or a lure technique. Um, because we're gonna force this guy to move. Luring silver out, yeah? So why why do we do it? Because we're gonna put it in ineffective square or like a bad square. So we kinda we, we call it in shogi, we, we call it like a break shape. Break a shape. We often use those words um in this case we kind of break the shape of the silver by distracting or like distracting yeah luring distracting are the words that we use usually in this situation so yeah it's like an invitation please take my pawn yeah but what happens when we drop the pawn if the silver takes we actually can clear off this pawn. If they run away, um, well, they go further away. The promotion alone isn't enough to treat them anything. Um, and then I'm going to answer the question in a second. Uh, there is the option that they jump in onto the square, but in that case, 
uh, if the silver comes here, we're gonna have an exchange, yeah? Gold for silver. If the pawn comes here, we just take the silver they take the gold we take. So we have an exchange here. So lost material. No. Exchange. So we've improved our situation greatly here. We're not losing a silver. We're not losing a gold. We're getting a silver for the gold. That's a huge thing, just because of this one technique. It's amazing. Okay, uh, to answer your question, um, so if you play on 81 dojo, as you know, the small pieces promote to a gold, right? To a gold general, that's not how you write it. To a gold general, yeah? All the small pieces promote to a gold general. Um, and you have a token, promoted pawn. You have a lance. You have a knight. And you have a silver. And those are the kanji they use. So actually those kanjis are kind of cursive out of this. They, they all mean gold. This kanji is from a different kanji like this, which means ima, which is very complex, it's historical. Uh, why did it come from there? Like I don't remember, but it's from different kanji. But what you need to know is all they have the roof. Now we're reading a book. Um, so this type of font is really hard to find on the computer. So they came up with uh, different ways, uh, similarly to a dragon. Yeah, we have a dragon and we have a horse and a horse. There are two ways to write this kanji. Yeah, there's the traditional one. It's, I cannot even draw it because it's so complex. Something like that. Yeah, the dragon and the horse will be like... So on 81, you will probably see those. In the books, though, they simplify it so that it's easier for your eyes to read. Um, and in case of silver, basically, in case of those, they keep the original name of the piece and then they add. So like each of them, this means promoted, yeah, promotion or promoted. So they will have, the token is going to be token actually because it's hiragana. We have promoted lens, promoted knight, Promoted silver. And then they're gonna squeeze it, squish it together like this, and it's gonna look weird. But those are those two kanji together, basically. <laughs> yeah. So there are, this is why Shogi is so complex, because you have many styles of the font for pieces. Um, the promotion promoted pieces especially are quite confusing for to us. Then you can write each general with full name or short name. And then you have different cursives you can use. Yeah. So this is the books. Shogi books are stand stand they have like the standard that they follow. And they will use promoted something. That's the standard they have. For the dragon, they will use the simplified dragon kanji. For the horse, they will use the simplified kanji for the horse, yeah. And this is why we end up seeing promoted silver. That's just the standard they have. And yeah, it's upside down here, because it's enemy silver. But it's this, promoted silver. Promoted silver. Yeah, if, if you would look just on this kanji, it looks like silver, right? You just don't know this one, because it means promotion. It's confusing. Like this. If you read Shogi books, you will have uh, free, free bishop promotion. It's the same kanji, just upside down. Yep, and this is here. Yeah. Uh, here we say actually promoted silver because that's the name of the piece. 
But here you have the pound promotes 249. Yeah. We say also pound promotion, promoted pound, or uh, we don't say promoted pound, promoted silver, silver promotion, the same way it works in Japanese, because we took it from Japanese, yeah. Uh, this is why the kanji is here. And this is why it brings confusion. Okay, back to the topic. Sente, we had no defense, but five knight pawn. It's a very interesting small technique. Small technique means tactic, I guess. Uh, if we move the promoted silver, the line that they were targeting becomes less possible, less efficient. Um, and yeah, once we force them move to piece to move, we can put them in a bad square. And this is what the lure technique is doing, yeah? So we're basically luring them into bad square. So basically we're luring them to the fisherman, yeah, so that we can capture the fish and do something about it. I mean, the penguin is still there. He's gonna eat your fish. Like, we're not slowing the attack down forever, but we are bringing them closer. All right. Uh, 17. This is checkmate threat. Dragon takes, we take, they promote. This is the most known, very, okay, the most known. It's actually a very unusual line, but a very strong line on Mino that you can do to check my threat with open check. Open check by being lens promotion and bishop attack at the king at the same time. And again, it's hard to defend it. It's very hard to defend it. Uh, you could try to drop the gold here to block the dragon, right? But then they just take. We take. They're gonna take this gold. We take, and because the dragon is affecting, we can drop a piece here and like break the castle completely. So it's not gonna work to drop the gold here. Instead, we have a technique. It's gonna be really weird. It's gonna be to drop the gold here. Why is it weird? Hey, the dragon can take it. But hey, what are we talking about? The lure technique, right? The lure technique. This is why we're giving them the gold for free. So it's a very unusual technique that's gonna save us. Another way to escape here, by the way, is pawn push. Try to make escape, but then take promotion. Take promotion. Uh, silver drop. They have a silver in hand. Uh, that's gonna lead to a mate as well. So pawn push also doesn't work. So back to the gold drop. We have the gold drop. Um, they can take it. And this is the lure technique. Yeah, luring dragon away. That's the point here. As a result, uh, result lowering attack power. Similarly to the blockade we had, we are limiting their efficiency of the piece. We're limiting their power, yeah? So the dragon is looking here, but if it's here, it's less efficient, right? It's less efficient. Because it cannot do check anymore. And therefore, um, extending king life, yeah. So again, the piece uh, material doesn't matter because we're trying to survive. In survival, only what matters is the life, yeah. Only the survival. Um, again. Speed is what we will need, yeah? So this kind of connects to the previous talk. We're lowering their speed. So let, let's 
let's uh, put it into perspective and say that this is speed minus minus yeah we talk speed plus plus in this case we actually manage to speed minus minus for them um so why does it defend actually if they were to take the gold here king takes lance promotion this time we can take the lance because the head of the king is protected they cannot drop the silver at the head this is the technique here um So this attacking line is called Thunder Drop. And the point is if you defend 4-8 square, which is this square, you're gonna survive. I think it's called Thunder Drop. Because it does feel like a thunder, yeah? It's like boom and you die. Yeah, thunder. So the thunder attack is countered by 4 8 square taking care of the square if you're in this situation if you're able to drop this gold here it means you're surviving let's say this is rook yeah you're able to defend the tesuji the thunder tesuji by dropping the gold yeah all right um yeah, we're gonna end up here. There's so many new techniques. Uh, the lure technique will continue. This is again lure technique. We're gonna talk more in the detail. What's important from today, you guys have to remember, is the Judo Kaose. Judo Kaose has three techniques. Pushing the piece away. So he's fighting an enemy. Yeah? Pushing the p enemy away. Making an exchange as, let's say, exchange of punches. Well, exchange of politeness as well. Using blocks on the knees, on the on the hands. Yeah, that's also a judo thing. Um, speaking of shogi, that's going to be all about those pivotal pieces. You want to push them away. You want to push them away from your castle or push them away from your camp completely. You want to exchange them off so that they lose their influence. And like here we exchange this pawn so that the rook becomes weaker. Um, and here we had this blockade that we talk, blocking the knee or blocking the elbow. Uh, we just block them off, making rendering this rook completely useless. Similarly here we're rendering this bishop completely useless. And combining this technique, we're kind of learning about the lure technique where we are also making them useless, but in a different manner, yeah? By luring the piece into a bad square. Yeah, here and here, we lure them away from their target. You're like, here, have an apple. And they're lured away, yeah? We're gonna continue that next week. Jodoka also can put the opponent away, block their attacks, or pay them money in exchange for them not beating you up. That's one way to explain it, I guess. <laughs> yeah let's go with the money payment let's go with the bribe thing yeah that works too <laughs> the other thing is like they exchange the like the movements or the techniques that's another way to look at it but anything that works for you guys um we're gonna continue with our penguin friends uh next week Let's just save the changes. Yeah. Tomorrow, no stream. Saturday, we're back with our casual shogi study, I guess. Um, last week, we did some crazy shogi. I don't know what we're going to do this week. Every time is, every week is different. Um, we're going to see, we're going to see. But yeah, um, also guys, if you're part of the TT series, make sure to... Uh, check the results and if you can send an a form, it's an anonymous form, just complain all about the tournament you want so that we can improve it. You can do it in the Discord as well. And thank you guys for staying until now. I will see you to, um, Saturday. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.